Okay, so this is now one of the first episodes of 10 Minutes with Tamara. And the idea is that I'm um, asking questions and getting asked questions by random people around the country. I'm Tamara Rubin, Let's Safe Mama, letsafemama.com, and you are? I'm Fernina McKenzie, and I live in Wisconsin. Yay! And, and, and um, do you want to start by asking me a question, and then I'll ask you a question, then you can ask me a question? Sure. Uh, so as you know, like, cause we've been chatting a little bit personally, we're thinking about looking for land. And I vaguely remember you saying something about how like old orchards could be high in heavy metals and like farmland and stuff. And so what are your tips and advice for looking for land to build on, to be aware of from a lead safety standpoint? So, so there's two types of land I've heard that have been highly contaminated with lead. Um, one is orchards, like you said. So um, they used to use the, the leaded pesticides to prevent um, pests getting up the trees. So the bases of the trees are often really high lead. Th this is unusual to find. I haven't found it a lot, but there's a few rare cases where families have moved onto orchard land. So the main thing is to test the soil before uh, you purchase, but if you can avoid um, an orchard, that, that would be a good place to start. Uh, depends on how old the orchard is, too. Um, and then in terms of normal crops, like other kinds of crops, vegetables, there shouldn't be leaded pesticides uh, in America and, and on, on soil that was more recently used because it was outlawed and it's um, not healthy for the plants and all sorts of reasons that that there shouldn't be leaded pesticides. However, there might be lead contamination in soil on a farm uh, from leaded gasoline that was used in tractors and lead contaminated, lead painted farm equipment like tractors or trucks or other things along those lines. So, uh, I, I mean, I don't wanna say avoid farms, but if you're gonna build from scratch, if you can find any pristine land, Oop, did I lose you? <laughs> if I, lost, I lost you for a second. <laughs> um, Just disappeared. <laughs> um, if, if, I mean, can you find pristine land where you are? Is that an option? Uh, well, we live in an old city and we are pretty much surrounded by agricultural land and then live on Lake Michigan. So, you know, we're kind of landlocked the one direction east and then to the west is a lot of agricultural land and so we're kind of looking up and down the shoreline but it's very expensive to find and most of it is not pristine so we're just trying to be aware you know like obviously like there's some land where they already ripped down buildings and they you know redid the land and now they're selling it and i'm like nope that's a pass <laughs> like so trying to just be very careful and aware because if we're going to get out of this house we want a safe house well, so if I were going to choose some land, I would go in the forest. I mean, I would look for forest land that also had open, sunny areas where I could garden, um, you know, enough to sustain my family, because that's less likely to be riddled with any kind of toxic pesticides outside of lead. You know, there's right. not just one version of pesticide. Right. But so yeah. the, other, the other area that I heard was highly leaded um, from a pesticide use is um, is pot crops. So if there are illegal marijuana crops. <laughs> not in Wisconsin. That's not so much a thing. <laughs> Warm um, enough. <laughs> okay. Um, but it can happen. And so the problem there is if there was an Ill Ill illegal crop, then there was nothing to prevent them from using illegal pesticides. And those pesticides usually are, are from, come from Mexico and can be used even more recently, you know, prior to the legalization of marijuana in multiple states across the United States. So, you know, look, you know, you, you won't necessarily know whether or not there was an illegal crop, but you can take a few soil samples and test the soil. And that's a good way to do it too. Have a, um, you know, take some surface soil samples as well as some deeper ones in the area where you want to actually build the house. And you can do that if there's no house there, you can do that before you buy pretty easily. Um, so I would recommend that as an option um, just to, to prepare yourself and kind of scope out where the exact places you want to build the house and also where the places that 
you might want to have children's play play areas and such. I've, I've been, done that for some people where I've gone to their lots in the middle of nowhere and tested their soil. It's really rare in a wooded area or with trees to find um, to find lead if it's not a not an orchard. So do you have what's your, what's another question? Do you have? Uh Oh, well, so like my second question with that is, okay, so once we find safe land, um... Oh, you froze. <laughs> I think you froze. <laughs> I am so sorry. I have no idea what's going on. Okay. I've never happened before. Um, my other question is like, do you have testing on a lot of materials? Because obviously we're looking to build a house and if we're going to build a house, we want all safe things so like and we want to make sure that all of like the tiles and the faucets and everything we put in our house is going to be safe because we've found out some of the quirkiest things here are just ridiculously high in lead and we're like we never even would have thought of that so we just want to be doing our due diligence so like how much of that is on your blog and like do you have like guidance for that Okay, so there's a philosophical guidance I have, and that is what I'm planning on using when I build my house after I tear down the house that we're living in right now, whatever that is, which is some unspecified time in the future. Because um, financially, we're kind of in the same position as you. <laughs> um, uh, so I plan on building a house made of metal, like uh, steel and concrete. We're looking to do a post home. So it would be steel siding, steel roofing. Oh, good. So yeah, and cement, you know, base. Yeah. So that should be good. <laughs> so I'm looking to do concrete, um, wood and steel, and I'm not planning on using any paint or painted materials. Right. And Same. That, that, would be, that would be the best way, but still you can get steel that's been contaminated. It shouldn't be available for use in residential properties, but there have been shipments of steel that have, ha that have had to be recalled. Uh, they came from China. The steel was treated with lead paint to um, prevent it from rusting. So you want to make sure whatever you buy is lead free and that's not always obvious, but the best way to start is to specifically buy building materials intended to be used in residential structures because if they're not intended to be used in residential structures they don't have to follow the legislation uh, that would require them to be lead safe or lead free because the law the 1978 lead paint law is only about paint being used in residential structures so that's why what, one thing that's a real problem is people building container homes right that's Super, super scary. Yeah, and they're all high lead paint. Um, I've never tested a container that wasn't high lead paint, like 10,000, 20,000 parts per million lead, because they're not intended to be residential structures, so they're not regulated. And l luckily, hopefully, a lot of that, um, a lot of that uh, type of construction, they're, they're actually gutting and they're putting a whole new interior surface and sometimes a new exterior surface. So they're covering up any lead, but I still have concerns about like the construction implications of any sanding or grinding or cutting on the side of the home. So uh, other than that, I don't have advice about uh, specific materials. There's lots of tile examples on the blog. However, I don't recommend using any tile. Um, you know, if you can avoid tile altogether, I'm hoping to use stainless steel for all my counters when we eventually go there. Okay. So, like for flooring, I was leaning towards laminate. I haven't seen anything bad about laminate because uh, I know you said carpet collects more of those, the dust and the fiber, and it's just not as healthy to have as something you can wash. So. Yeah. I, well, so Green Building Supply is a good company. Like, it's a good website to look at and see what their options are and see what they're choosing to sell. That's a good company. However, for flooring for our home, I'm planning on doing a concrete floor with a stain imbued in the floor if we choose to go with a color. A friend of ours is a green builder in Berkeley, California, and that's what he did in his home. His floors are, are basically finished concrete and my initial thought was oh my god little children will bump their heads and bleed you know um but he didn't have a big problem with that you know that that wasn't a concern for him i i, I i'm sorry to not have a better answer on that one it's just that that manufactured um 
components have so many pitfalls that each one has to be really well researched. And unfortunately, even the faucets, fittings, and fixtures for water, water delivery systems today can be contaminated with high levels of lead. Right. So. Um, okay, so I'm going to ask you two questions. So the format here is that I'm supposed to, you're supposed to ask me questions. I am recording this. I don't know how it's recording and if the sound is working. <laughs> so we'll okay. see. Um, but, and then I'm going to ask you two questions. So my question for you is, how's it going with what, just tell, tell me about the hazard assessment you just had and, and what the findings and, and, and what was the most shocking thing there? Um, so actually, uh, it went really well. He was incredibly thorough. I was like, so thankful because I was worried. I was like, someone's going to come in and they're not going to do as good of a job as you did. And I was so worried that he was going to miss a bunch of stuff. Um, but he did a great job. He was here for like two hours and he even like climbed the scaffolding outside and like tested the saffeting paint and everything. He was amazing. The thing that took me by surprise was that we have an enamel glaze on our kitchen sink. Oh. And I don't remember you testing my sink when you were here. I wonder if we zipped. I remember you testing the counters. But the sink is really high in lead. And that one blew me away. I thought I knew all the hazards. And we, you know, sealed up the windows and haven't been opening the windows. And we've been fastidious about hand washing with the kids coming in from outside. And we put like some extra dirt in that high dirt on the south side just to kind of cover it over. And you know, we've, we've done what we can. We ripped down all the lath and plaster in the basement and cleaned it all up. And we epoxied the floor down there like you recommended. So like we, we've been working on some stuff and it's been going well, but yeah, him coming in and being like, oh, this is an issue. I was like, how did I miss this? Every time I wash my dishes, I'm washing it in lead contaminated water. Well, and not necessarily, but possibly with the enameled sinks, what I recommend is um, putting a bucket in there. I'm, yeah, I don't recall. It's like, there's, I've been to so many homes, it's hard oh. to remember. Um, so I, I, I recommend, like we got a new sink when our, um, when we got this house 13 years ago and we got a lead free sink from American Standard and the enamel actually has chipped a bunch. So even though it's newer and lead free, it's not necessarily as durable. And prior to that, I would want, I bathed my children in the sink. And so I wanted to make sure I was gonna be bathing my children in the clean sink. And so we got a large basin sink that was lead free. But otherwise, if someone has a leaded sink like that, yeah, just putting a plastic bucket can help. But it's not necessarily poisoning your children to wash your dishes in that sink. Um, because, you know, if you think about it, you wash the dish, then you rinse it, and then you put it somewhere else, right? So you're taking a clean, newly rinsed dish. And, and um, unless, you're, unless you're dipping water in the sink to rinse it, which I don't think most people do, then you're putting in your dish rack. So hopefully it's not a concern. I just have more concern if kids are playing in the water in the sink or using it in a way that they're going to interact with um like like a bathtub you know like right um, well that's reassuring <laughs> um i mean and and that doesn't mean i i don't think you should get rid of an old leaded sink i think that's a good thing to do your kitchen was all newer so I mean, yeah it was and everything else you tested like the cupboards and the counters and the floor and everything was fine but i don't remember you testing the sink and so i was very surprised and then he said that, ironically, the worst window in the whole house, because he did XRF, dust wipe, soil samples, like he did like the whole gamut, which was amazing. It was only like $175. Oh, wow. It was, it was amazing. Um, he said that the worst window was actually our kitchen window. So I was so thankful that I like put strippable caulk and then I put the insulator over top because I was probably contaminating our food a lot before I actually sealed that one up because I used to leave that window open. Because that part I, of the house still had the old siding on the outside. Is that why? Or I have siding at the brick house. Um, so what, but, but was there old tr window trim on around original window trim? Because the interior of the kitchen was redone, but the exterior of the house is really high lead. I, I remember your porch was really high lead. So high, yes. So, yep. and that, so I'll, I'll make that my second question. So given the amount of lead we found on your porch and your porch walls, like the paint, the stone or brick areas, I think it was stone, right? On the, on, on the trim or something. 
or the there was a concrete floor there's concrete and then brick okay and like railing around and 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 there was a lot of accessible areas that were super high lit what did you end up doing since i saw you last <laughs> uh, so we ended up cleaning the front entry really well and then we closed and locked the door and then i came around the outside and i i like cleaned the porch as best as i could and then i ended up putting caution tape in front of the house so that people couldn't come on the porch anymore and then i bought just like a little patio bin uh, that you can store like cushions or whatever in and i put it at the steps and i put a note for a mail carrier i was like you can't go on our porch <laughs> the lead paint is chipping this is just you know, it's hazardous, we're gonna deal with it, but please stay off the porch. And they have been really great about putting our mail and our packages in there. Um, so it's big enough for the packages so they're not setting them on any soil that they could get contaminated. So then when we bring the packages in the house, they're clean. Uh, we put soil along the south wall because that was the one that tested the highest. So we um, put some extra soil there just to cover it up temporarily. Um, not quite sure if, if and what we're going to deal with with that because um, we're probably going to be moving not long. Um, we uh, outside, do we do anything else outside? Um, we didn't change the kids playing habits outside terribly much besides not allowing them to play around the porch area anymore. Uh, we kept them focused more towards the back of the house which had less hazards and then focused very much on hand washing so like literally I've been like teaching my three-year-old like we go like this and then the back of our hands and then in between their fingers and we rub our fingertips and we scrub our thumbs and like the whole gamut like working with him on this is how you have to wash your hands to get all that off and that's that's the interesting uh, thing is that like this whole COVID nineteen scenario is actually really useful for dealing with lead too. All the things that people, you know, <laughs> so that's yes, cool. that is a perk. But it's also um, yeah, possible so because people are home more during this and more exposure ha is happening. Right, right, yeah, that is a plus and a minus. So, um, yeah, we have everyone take off their shoes when we come in the back door, and we have everyone put their shoes my husband quick whipped together like a shoe rack that like is on our stairs and so there's like places for everyone's shoes so we tell them you take your shoes off on the rug and then you step with your clean feet on the floor okay. and then they go wash their hands right away and then I go through with Dawn and um paper towels every couple days and I scrub all the way down the stairs to the back door and I clean up that area really well it's so much work. It's like that. I'm, that's why I'm glad you're moving. There's just too, there's just too much for you there. Um, and I, and, and people say it's insensitive when I recommend that people move, but the, the, the impact of both trying to live in a space that's contaminated and, uh, potentially poisoning your kids, even though you've made all these efforts, it's just too great. And, uh, you know, for me, we just chose to get out of there and we got, we stayed in a hotel for 10 days and, and one thing I've, I've told people is that sometimes hotels will do like a, a local emergency medical rate of less than $100 a night or maybe even something like $59 a night to help families get out of their home in a situation like that. But, you know, I, I'm, gl I'm so glad you're, you're moving. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be a wild ride here. Uh, we are going to be out by the end of the month. And then the Lead Safe Homes program is coming in in August to do whatever they decide. You know, now that they have the lead report, they get to decide what they will and will not cover. So he made his recommendations, but they don't have to do all of it. So we'll see what they cover. Um, but I, I just have this niggling feeling that they're not going to cover everything that I would need covered to feel safe here. So um, I, we're going to be out by the end of the month and we're probably not coming back. And I think once they come through, we're just going to sell the house and then take the money and we're looking for land and gonna try to build and it's gonna be a wild ride. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's I think a good adventure for you to be on right now. Well, I'm trying to keep these little videos short because just because, you know, people's attention span. So I'm sure we can talk again soon and I'll message you on Facebook, but thank you so much for being part of this. Thank you so much, Tamara. I really appreciate everything. I'm so thankful I found you. 
and I'm so happy that you were you agreed to do this, and I, I'm really appreciative. So, um, so I'm going to sign off then, and I want people to know that they can look up more information at leadsafemama.com and join the lead group on Facebook and the Lead Safe Mama YouTube channel. And we're going to be doing more of these little interviews with friends and followers of Lead Safe Mama. Hopefully, we'll um, have a lot of interesting questions answered and and good conversations. See you later, and thank you so much. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha